over the years, history, uh, conquer. Men have been taught to conquer, 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 uh, prey on the weak. And then it doesn't help that we have entertainment that has pushed that type of narrative. Uh, and it's just not right. I think the opposite, being masculine and being brave, should be actually protecting the weak, those that are physically handicapped, but those that are just not brave enough to defend themselves. And there's nothing wrong with people that just are afraid of conflict, that don't want to have conflict. I think it's up to people um, that are in those positions to uh, stand the ground and protect those, and whether it's through education or if it has to get physical at times. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the same thing if you come out of a club and you see a bunch of men uh, assaulting a woman or assaulting uh, a stray dog mm-hmm. or something like that. Our first reaction as humans is to intervene and protect that weak person or that weak animal or whatever the case may be. But what's happening is it's not okay to protect another male. And that's just not fair to me. I think we need to protect anybody that's vulnerable. I I wanted to, um, this may be selfish, um, but going backwards to your story of when you first got to prison and what we read was about a week later, you, it really hit home that all of these animals that were being served um, to you uh, were being, um, you know, that myth was being perpetuated and you realized you were taking their their um, freedom away and that really the only end of their road was death, whereas yours was obviously um, you're, you know, in work now that's changing the world. I have a cousin in prison and he has had the same epiphany. Yeah. And we are, we write letters all the time. I just, I, 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 it's emotional for me. I, I want to go deep into um, that feeling that you had when that first hit you, what you felt like, what you thought, what was it like when you shared it with the other prisoners who are eating a lot of meat and, and, and how you traverse that week, that month, that next year, however long it was. Yeah, it was uh, uh, one of the most difficult times of my life, if not the most difficult time I ever had. Uh, in my life, and <clears throat> I was there that first week in, in, in the system, and I was just trying to figure out, I'm not religious by any means, but I am spiritual. I feel like um, there is higher energies and powers, and, and, and I feel like the universe presents itself in a unique way for us to uh, follow different paths, meaning karma. I think karma was shown to me when I was eight years old, and I was just trying to figure out why am I sitting in this jail cell and uh, what, what is, what's next? You know, because when you're in there and your, your, your loved one probably has an out date, know when he's supposed to get out, but you're never sure if you're going to get out that out date. It's very, um, it's scary because you don't know. It's like, it's like being trapped in a box. You don't know when you're going to get out. Uh, and I was just trying to make sense of it all and everything pointed to a memory. It just, it, it's just like a movie, this memory shot in my head. When I was eight years old, my mother would feed us chicken wings. And uh, I was looking at those chicken wings, um, this memory uh, on, in front of me, and looking at my mom and looking at, looking at my arms and looking at the chicken wings, and I pushed back. I said, I don't want this. And it's kind of hard to tell a single uh, struggling black mother uh, with three kids that you don't want what she's cooked or what she can even afford. Uh, and I said, I don't want that. She said, well, why? I said, because they look like little bitty arms. And, and her response was like, well, then you're not going to eat. And I'm my mom's only kid. I mean, my, own, my mom's only son, but I am a true product of my mom. She's very assertive, outspoken. She comes from the civil rights era. So she taught us to be a lot like her and never back down. And I didn't back down from my mother. I said, well, then I'm not going to eat. Um, so we bumped heads for a while, but she eventually compromised uh, and she went to uh, buy me what she thought would help kind of put a bandage on that image because I was having a problem looking at those bones and those that cartilage. Uh, so she fed me a lot of fish sticks going forward. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it helped. It actually yeah. helped. I mean, I felt like I was a pescatarian for a while. You know, <laughs> it, <laughs> it, it helped uh, just to I, – well, I didn't like to see any type of meat protein attached to any type of – body parts. And that was always my issue uh, from the dried up veins and stuff like that. So that memory uh, came into my head in the prison cell. And then I just, and I, I, I connected instantly. And keep in mind, this is 18 years ago. We didn't have social media. We didn't have documentaries. We didn't have influential people. We didn't have no science or data to, pro- 
to support our lifestyle or our diet. Uh, but I made that connection and I said, huh, I get it. And I denounced uh, and I created this mantra for myself that says, if it requires harm, then no. Um, and I didn't want to do any, have anything to do with destroying any animals or contributing to uh, my own community for us pumping drugs into the community. I just totally did a hard reset and walked away from any negative energy. And I understand mm -hmm. that your cellies um, benefited from this, or they so they thought, because they would trade their their vegetables or other non meat foods to uh, for your meat. You were a vegetarian, right? Did you I just prison talk us right now? Is that I don't even know. I'm just Maselli. Well, my, wow. My brother also spent time in prison, and he he remained vegan the whole time. It's very challenging, but it's possible now. It's, it's back then. It was now. much much harder to even be vegetarian. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, your cellies were the people, the men with who, who with whom you shared a cell, right? You had three. Yes, I had three that I shared a cell with. Yeah, and I would trade my meat protein for their complex and simple carbs, which was their side dishes. And they was more than happy to do that. They thought I was crazy. They thought I was weird. <laughs> <laughs> and you also were in the gym lifting huge, yeah. huge weights in the, in, the, in the gym at the prison. And those other guys didn't know that you were actually vegetarian, right? No, they didn't know. Well, oh, not, not those that wasn't close to what we call the car. The car is your close group of friends. Like you get in the car and you ride or die. You know, uh, mm. they they knew it, but people outside of our car that may lived in the other part of the compound, because we would have liftoffs and uh, competitions. Uh, but yeah, I, the funny thing happened. I didn't go plant based vegetarian for you know health. I didn't know what, my, what was going to happen to my body. I just know I didn't want to have anything to do with this. This is my me forever giving up this that old lifestyle so I could get home sooner and to just be different. And uh, my body transformed. I was like over 250 pounds and I, already, and I got down already to like a solid 185, 190. Uh, but I was lifting crazy weight. I slimmed down. I was, ab I mean, I was really ripped and strong and people was like, wow, what are you doing? And, uh, and I said, I said, I just eat a lot of carbs. <laughs> carbs. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, I ate a lot of carbs and stuff like that. And granted, I had, uh, whenever they would serve on the line, uh, like mashed potatoes that might have been filled with uh, milk or butter or whatever, because I didn't know about the dairy and egg industry. We didn't have that information. I just yeah. thought meat was meat. I, I was ignorant. I didn't know better until I came home. That's when I trans transitioned completely into vegan later on. But yeah, it was an interesting transition for my body. And I was became one of the strongest in the compound. Over 1,200 men was in that facility, and I was one of the top 10 that was outlifting a lot of people. Hey, folks. Okay, back by very popular demand is our plant-powered plate fridge magnet, which you are going to receive for free if you leave us a rating and a review on whatever platform you're listening to this podcast on. So here are the details. Just write your quick review. Does not need to be long does not need to be a whole story, just be honest and speak from the heart. Then take a quick screenshot of the review you wrote and email it to us at podcast at switchforgood.org. That's podcast at switchforgood.org. And include your mailing address so we can send you a power plate. We are doing this because the more reviews we garner, the higher we go in search results, which means more folks will learn about our podcast. So the power is in your hands. Leave us a review. And zoom, zoom, your power plate arrives at your doorstep. So thank you so much for tuning in today. If we helped you in any way, then click the subscribe button and let's keep hanging out together. We have so much more to share with you. And if you need more information on actually making the switch for good, please visit us at switchforgood.org for loads of info. And you can subscribe to our mailing list where you will receive all sorts of super cool gifts, discount codes to our very fave dairy-free products, and a lifetime of powerful health tips. So join us on the journey to switch for good. This is the future.